back in the class and we're Professor Fusaro. Today we are going to touch on a different topic, something that's extremely touchy, similar to the carbohydrate video I did, and this one is going to be about glycemic index, or known as the GI. And <clears throat> this is going to be a simplified explanation of the glycemic index. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail because there's so many variables and different things to take into consideration when talking about the glycemic index. So we're going to try and keep it simple and uh, hopefully give you a better understanding of what this is and what it means in, in the real world. So the glycemic index, what it does is it measures the effects of carbohydrates and their ability to raise your blood sugar levels. The simple definition of what the GI is. It was created way back in 1981, and what it was, was intended was to help people with diabetes manage their blood sugar levels and their meal planning. And the problem is, is it's carried into the real world in healthy individuals and it's been creating a huge controversy over how important the GI is and its ability to affect someone's diet and as far as their lifestyle. So the problem with the glycemic index mainly is that it was a tool that was used in isolation. So they used it, studies were done where people were taken after an overnight fast, so they would sleep and not eat, wake up in the morning, wake up in the morning and they were fed a fixed amount of carbohydrates. And these carbohydrates were measured, well the effect of the carbohydrates and the blood glucose levels were measured two hours after they were consumed. So this scale is based out of 100. People were fed between 50 and 100 grams of carbohydrates and then their blood glucose was measured two hours later. If the blood glucose response was 80% of the tested food, the GI value would be 80. So this is how you're getting these numbers. Uh, again, if a carbohydrate was fed to someone and their response was 120%, then the GI would be 120. So the basic uh, food that we use for 100 is white bread. That's what it measures on a glycemic index. So just to give you an idea. The problem with the glycemic index is that it is tested in a fasted state in isolation. The majority of most people uh, and the, the majority of someone's day is based on the postprandial state, which is a fed, not fasted state. And that takes a cons excuse me, into consideration uh, digestion and absorption of meals which can take you know, four to eight hours or even sometimes longer, depending on the size of the meal. So the overlap of the absorption of these foods from meal to meal influences the effect that the GI has on individual foods. So that's one, one uh, definition, I guess you could say, of or one thing to prove this somewhat being irrelevant. Other things that people you know, don't realize is that something such as heating something up, um, take for instance even a banana, how ripe it is can affect the GI values. So if you're, you know, if you're looking at a banana and you're worried about GI, if this one's more ripe than this one, you know, are you going to eat the one that's less ripe because it's going to have a lower glycemic effect? It's stuff like that that people are stressing about too much. Um, also something uh, as reducing particle size, like take for instance a rice cake. Rice cakes are in most bodybuilders diets and known to be an extremely healthy carbohydrate. What a rice cake is, is like exploded rice pretty much, you know, puffed rice. And they actually have a pretty high GI. So it, it's, again, it's becoming irrelevant. And, and this leads into the glycemic load, which has to do with the serving size of the carbohydrate. So take for instance, watermelon. Watermelon on the glycemic index is going to be about 75, which 
out of 100, it's considered pretty high. But now let's take a serving size. Say four ounces of watermelon at this GI only has about six grams of carbohydrates. So the glycemic load is only about eight, which you, you can you know, look up some information on a glycemic load. Eight is considered very low. So the glycemic load uh, plays a role with the glycemic index as well. So that's why I'm trying to keep this simple because too many people are going crazy over this and it's <laughs> affecting us every day. And it's unfortunate that we have to stress over something that most people don't really have a lot of knowledge on. And all of this leads to um, insulin and insulin spikes. And another problem, again, is a lot of people don't understand what that means. Most people think that you consume a simple sugar or carbohydrate, it spikes your insulin. What, what does that mean? What does spike your insulin mean? So I'm trying to keep this simple about the glycemic index. If you want to look up information um, more in depth on insulin, feel free to do so. You know, I can provide some links for you or you can message me and I can, you know, lead you to some articles that are, you know, that go in depth on this. But what insulin basically does is it pushes nutrients into the cells. And the thing is, is with, with insulin, it's usually thought that a lower glycemic food, something that's low GI, causes lower insulin response. Now, the problem is, is say you were to add a protein to a carbohydrate to lower the glycemic index of it, you have to understand the protein is going to increase the insulin response. So this is why you can't just make claims that a high GI carb is bad for you and a low GI carb is good for you. It's, it's totally thrown out the window. And, and this also takes into account um, another index known as the satiety index, which is how satisfied you feel after eating something. So something that's looked at as a high GI carb or even sometimes known as a dirty food like a white potato or white rice, they are actually higher on the satiety index than oatmeal, which is supposed to keep you fuller and satisfied longer. But research shows that you know, a white potato will, will have more of a, a satiety effect than oatmeal will. So that, that again, you know, plays into account with this. So that's, you know, that's, I guess, this is longer than I intended it to be. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. In healthy individuals, the GI becomes pretty irrelevant. And mostly because we don't eat foods in isolation. You don't wake up in the morning fast and eat a piece of white bread by itself. Once you add protein to that, whether it be chicken, tuna, meat, steak, anything like that, or even a fat, olive oil, avocado, or cheese, or anything like that, you significantly lower the glycemic response to that food. So anytime you add another nutrient to a carbohydrate, fiber, protein, fat, anything like that, you are slowing down the insulin response. And especially with adding a fat, if you added fat to a piece of white bread, you're gonna slow down gastric emptying and absorption speed, and it's gonna make this, again, irrelevant. So what we should just do is focus, you know, focus your carbohydrates on whole, um, unprocessed sources, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, your potatoes, your yams, your beans, all that stuff to ensure that you're getting nutrient dense foods and less calorie dense foods and really just, you know, worrying, stressing and nitpicking over the glycemic index of individual foods is just a way to obsess over this perfectionism with eating and what Alan Aragon likes to call it false food discrimination. And I completely agree with him. I was one, you know, I'm completely guilty of it. I was always worried about sugar content in foods and what's going to spike my insulin and what's not. But you have to understand that the body's ability to maintain homeostasis and maintain stable blood sugar levels is pretty damn efficient. And again, this goes for, you know, your everyday individual, people who work out, people who go to the gym, people who are healthy. Obviously, there are people out there that have diabetes, that have high blood sugar levels and low blood sugar levels, and I'm pretty sure that they're aware of what they're allowed to eat and what they're not allowed to eat and pretty much how to handle this. So if you are healthy, you know, going to the gym, not going to the gym, whatever, if you're active, if just stop, just...
Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, do not really worry about the glycemic index. It is going to cause more harm than good by stressing over it. So eat the foods that you enjoy eating. Again, you know, focus your carbohydrates at whole on processed sources and don't stress over it. It's only, again, going to cause more harm than good. So I hope that kind of clears some stuff up trying to simplify, simplify, simplify the glycemic index. And once again, as I always say, any questions or comments or concerns, leave them down below. Message me on Facebook. I can link you to a whole bunch of research and sources on this. I'll even provide some links down below of where I get this information from. And feel free to message me if you, if you need any uh, further understanding or anything like that. So I hope I cleared some of the information up on the glycemic index. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Um, thanks again for all the support. You know, I hope you like these kind of classroom things. I have some breaks in between my classes, so it's a good setup. I just have the computer on the table. I got the chalkboard if I want to use it, and the lighting's pretty good in here. Sounds pretty good in here. So, you know, I'll continue to make more of these educational videos in the classroom setting, and I hope you enjoy them. Give me a thumbs up if you do, just so I know. That way I'll continue to do this. And thanks again for the support. So please subscribe if you have not already. Join the Fusaro Fitness Facebook page in the description below. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.